Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the lead acid battery, also known as your car battery. So we're finally going to talk about that. So basically, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, let's do a little chart here. So we know that we're talking about electrochemical cells. If it's a spontaneous process, which we know for sure our lead acid battery is definitely a spontaneous process, we know that it is definitely a galvanic cell. So the lead acid battery is going to be in the same category as your NiCad battery and your alkaline battery. So let's break this down very, very simply simplistically here. The lead acid battery is also referred to as your car battery. Now we completely 100% know that our car battery is rechargeable. Okay. Usually it can last somewhere around five years, which is pretty nice, right? Because if we had to constantly recharge our battery or constantly take it out and do something funky with it and then put it back into our car, it would be a big, big pain. And so we're super happy that that is not the case. So what happens here is that we have what's called a lead acid battery and it's exactly what it sounds like we use lead and we use sulfuric acid okay so this is one that uses liquid so you never 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 want to just throw this battery away and you definitely don't want to open it up and throw the liquid on you that would be terrible bad bad decision okay so this specific cell consists of six electrochemical cells okay that produce, that each produce, I should say, 2.0 or 2 volts of energy. Okay, so that means we have six electrochemical cells times 2 volts of, ener uh, two volts of energy each gives us a total of 12 volts volts of energy. So your lead acid battery is actually a 12 volt battery, but that's because there's six different components in there each that make up two volts of energy, okay? So let's write out these equations for us. Let's start off with the very first one here. I'm not going to identify it. I'm going to ask you to identify what type of half reaction that is. But we take lead and we treat it with HSO4 minus in the aqueous state. These are your reactants. In the products we have lead sulfate, so lead sulfate here, solid plus H plus, so a hydronium ion, and two electrons, okay? We'll talk about hydronium versus hydroxide in future modules, so don't worry about that yet. So now our second half reaction starts with lead oxide, and we treat it again with HSO4 minus, again in the aqueous state, plus three hydronium ions, so very, very strong acidic components, plus two electrons, and then our products here are going to be lead sulfate, again, plus two waters and that's the liquid state. So then what we can do is add all of this together. So step one, first thing we do is we look, do our electrons transfer? Yes, definitely. We have two electrons here, two electrons here. They definitely cancel out. We're good to go. Now we look at everything else. So I see two of my HSO4 minus on this side, but they're both reactants, so we can't cancel those out. I do see one H plus on this side and three over here, so we're going to cancel out our three, and we're going to be left with two H plus left over. Okay, then I see two lead sulfates on this side, waters, waters, I think we're good. So then what I'm going to do is bring this down and see if I've created a beautiful chemical equation. So let's bring it all down. So we can start with lead in the solid state, and then we can treat that with PbO2, and then we can have 2HSO4 minus, which is in the aqueous state, and then we have 2H plus, which is also in our aqueous state. Then we go to our product side. We have two lead sulfates, PbSO4S, and then we have two water components. Everything else cancels out, and we don't have anything that's the same on each side, so we've done a perfect, perfect chemical equation. So before I keep going and show you a schematic of this, I want you to identify which reagent is reduced. Go. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did because there was just two options. So it either could have been lead or lead oxide. So the big thing you needed to do is just say which of my reagents is reduced, okay? Which one gains electrons? Which one has electrons on the reactant side of the equation? And that is definitely lead oxide, okay? So which reagent is reduced is lead oxide. We know reduction occurs at the cathode. So if I'd asked you about the cathode, you would have been able to answer that, which means alternatively, the anode is the oxidation reaction, and that is definitely your salt. Lead. So let's look at a schematic of this now that we've discussed the actual chemistry, and I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit so I have a little bit more room to write. So the first thing I want to point out is if we look at the very, very top of this, we see a black 
piece kind of coming out of the top. That is your anode. So if you've ever had to jump your battery and you see those pieces that come out of the top of it, your car battery, the black one, which is negative, that's your anode. So we just discussed this. We know that your anode is your oxidation. And so for this example, that is going to be your solid lead. Now your cathode is the opposite of that. That is going to be, well, your cathode, that's the one that gets reduced. And we just identified that that is our lead oxide, okay? So now that's what we can see on the very, very top, so the outside of the battery. So now this picture kind of cuts it away. They've peeled away the outside for you so we can see the inside. So we want to look at two different sections here. The first thing I want to point out is at the very, very bottom, what we see is this right here. We have one grid or one piece right here that is in the vertical component. It's kind of the greenish color, the greenish bluish color, and that is going to be your negative plate. So what they're saying right there is that's your anode and that's going to be where you're, you have your solid lead. Then right next to it, that clearish grayish kind of one, so like right here, that's going to be your positive plate. So your positive plate is going to have your lead oxide in there. So your lead oxide, that's going to be your cathode component. And so just like before, when we saw our NICAD battery where we layer components, this is very similar with the lead acid battery. You have your layered components. And so you see you have a positive plate, then a negative plate, a positive plate, a negative plate, and they alternate all the way through just so that we make sure that we have the electrons flow from the anode to the cathode. The last thing that I want to point out is that we like before where we have an electrolyte paste, this one actually uses an electrolyte liquid, which is your sulfuric acid, so your H2SO4. It's a very, very strong acid. You never, never, never want to get that on your body. So if your car battery somehow is leaking or you see liquid coming out of it, do not touch that. Don't drink it. Don't pour it on your friend. Don't pour it on your enemy. Don't do anything like that. It is really corrosive. You do not want that to touch your skin. It will burn, 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 and hurt. So the last thing I want to point out here is I want to go back up to our equation from before and highlight this one piece because everyone will always look at this and they go, wait, we don't have sulfuric acid. Technically we do. When we have 2HSO4 minus and 2H plus, we can actually put that together and say 2H2SO4. So depending on who you're talking to, your overall chemical equation is either going to have an HSO4 minus and an H plus or it's just going to have H2SO4. Both are correct. I want to be very clear about that. All right, so the last thing I want to point out, what are our alternative, alternative uses of our lead acid battery? It's not just a car battery. That's a big misconception. People commonly think that it's just using cars. That's not the case. We actually use these batteries in a lot of places that we cannot use an internal combustion engine, so we need some kind of help, right? And so the big common ones that we use are at wind turbine which we've already discussed in previous modules, they're electric generators, okay? These are often used in electric generators, especially on wind turbines, okay? So when we need to keep this nice and safe. A lot of times you're gonna see these batteries in electric wheelchairs, and there's kind of a double bonus here because A, you don't want in a wheelchair to have a big internal combustion reaction. You don't want that engine going on. But what's really neat about this is that lead is incredibly heavy. It's so, so heavy. If you've ever had a dental x-ray and they put the lead blanket on you, that's what lead feels like. It's really heavy. So it's nice is that when they use a lead battery, it actually stabilizes these wheelchairs. So when um, when something gets into the wheelchair that's maybe a little bit bigger or heavier, the lead battery helps stabilize it so that it doesn't tip over. So that's really nice. And the last one I want to do is for any of my um, construction people out there or anybody who has a family in a plant or a big plant, um, usually they use these these types of batteries in forklifts in warehouses. Okay. Fun fact, when I was an undergrad, I used to work at a box plant, okay, where we made boxes. I know it's sad. I'm such a hick from Michigan. But they had tons and tons of forklifts there, and they also used these lead acid batteries. So I was the nerd there being like, oh, tell me about your battery. It was, it was really embarrassing. It was actually really bad. Last thing I want to tell you, there's two major disadvantages of this. Disadvantages to a lead acid battery. First one, I'd already told you, lead is heavy. Okay, it's really, really heavy. It's something that you can't just use and throw around and everything. It's going to slow down your car. So really, really fast cars do not want to use a lead acid battery. And the second thing, which is even more important, is that it has toxic acid waste. It's dangerous. It's bad. Please be careful with this. Please, please, please don't do anything stupid with the sulfuric acid that's coming out of your battery. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, take care of yourself. Drink water.